Hi, I am Aishwarya Paul from Providence Women's College and I'll be dealing with your last two sections. It just uh, concerns with uh, some problems and you just need some formulas to do all the problems so it is comparatively easy and yes, we are going to get started with arc length of a curve. So let me give you an introduction for arc length. Suppose that you have the xy plane and a line segment which starts from the point A x1 y1 and goes to the point B x2 y2. Then you know how to find the length of this line segment, isn't it? It is root of x2 minus x1 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 the whole square. Which means that if the smooth curve given to you is a line segment, then you know how to find the length of the line segment. But suppose the smooth curve given to you is like this. Then again, there is a specific formula to find the length, the total length of this curve. That is the length from the starting point to the ending point of this curve. Suppose that you are plotting the time t through the x-axis and r of t. That is the curve through the y-axis. Suppose the starting time is a and the ending time is b. Then you know this point will be r of a that is you just substitute t is equal to a and this last point will be r of b that is you substitute t is equal to b. So to find the length from r of a to r of b what should you do? That is what you are studying in arc length of a curve. So suppose that r of t is given to you as f of t i cap plus g of t j cap plus h of t k cap. Here this was a two dimensional curve. Now this is a generalization and this is a three dimensional curve. And you are given t. Its uh, range is from a to b. That is the time starts from a and ends at b. Suppose that it is a smooth curve. Then the arc length, that is the length from A to B of the curve, which is known as the arc length and denoted as capital L, is defined as integral A to B magnitude of dr by dt dt. That is, you differentiate r and then integrate it from the starting time to the ending time. You know that dr by dt is the velocity of the curve. So it can also be written as or the arc length capital L is also defined as integral a to b magnitude of v of t dt. Hope you understood this. Now let us do some problems with this one. Problem 1. Find the length of the quaternary r of t is equal to t i cap plus cos h t j cap from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 1. So you are going to find the length of this curve r of t from the starting point t is equal to 0 that is a is given as 0 to the ending time t is equal to 1 which means p is given as 1. You know that the arc length is integral a to b magnitude of dr by dt dt where a is 0 and p is 1 so this is equal to integral 0 to 1 magnitude of d by dt of r of t is t i plus cos h t j dt. Now you are going to differentiate the given curve and it is equal to integral 0 to 1. You know that d by dt of t is 1. So 1 i cap plus d by dt of cos ht is sin ht. So 1 i cap plus sin ht j caps magnitude dt. Which is equal to integral 0 to 1. You know that the magnitude is root of the component of i the whole square plus component of j the whole square. That is integral 0 to 1 root of 1 square plus sin ht the whole square dt. Which is equal to integral 0 to 1 root of 1 plus sin h square dt. Which is equal to integral 0 to 1 root of cos h square dt dt. Since 1 plus sin h square t is equal to cos h square t by hyperbolic functions formula. So this is equal to you know root of the square will be the quantity itself. So this is equal to integral 0 to 1 cos ht dt and the integral of cos ht is equal to sin ht from 0 to 1. This is equal to sin h1 minus sin h0. You already know that sin h0 is equal to 0 since sin h0 is e raised to 0 minus e raised to 0 by 2. So this is equal to sin h of 1. This is how you do this problem. Now let's move on to the next problem which is slightly different from the previous one. Uh, let us see the problem. Find the arc length between 001 and 101 of the helix 
y is equal to sin 2 pi x, z is equal to cos 2 pi x. You might have noticed that here time is not given to you. That is the starting time or the ending time is not given to you unlike the previous question. In the previous question the starting time A and ending time B was given and thus it was very easy to find out the arc length. But here the starting point and the ending point is given to you. So from this you have to find out the starting time and the ending time. For this, the curve given to you is in terms of y and z, but implicitly it contains x. That is, inside y there is x and inside z also there is x. Thus, we can reparameterize the given helix as you put x is equal to t. Then you have y is equal to sine 2 pi t and z is equal to cos 2 pi t. Therefore, the reparameterized helix can be written as r of t is equal to in place of x you have t. So, t i cap plus sine 2 t j cap plus cos 2 t k cap where x is equal to t is given to you. Now, the starting point was 0, 0, 1 and the ending point was 1, 0, 1. You had taken x as equal to t and in the starting point x was 0. And in the ending point, x was 1, which means that at the starting point, t is 0 and at the ending point, t is 1. So, you have got a and b, that is the starting point, at the starting point, time t, time a will be equal to 0 and at the ending point, time b will be equal to 1, since you had taken x as the time. Thus, the arc length can be found out and it is equal to integral a to b magnitude of dr by dt dt which is equal to integral 0 to 1 magnitude of dr by dt dt which is equal to integral 0 to 1 magnitude of d by dt of the given helix that is t i cap plus sine 2 t j cap plus cos 2 pi t k cap dt which is equal to integral 0 to 1. You know that d by dt of t is 1. d by dt of sine 2 pi t by using chain rule you have it is cos 2 pi t into 2 pi that is 2 pi cos 2 pi t. Again by using chain rule d by dt of cos 2 pi t is minus sine 2 pi t into 2 pi that is minus 2 pi sine 2 pi t k cap dt. You have to find the magnitude of this one and it is integral 0 to 1 root of 1 square plus 2 pi cos 2 pi t the whole square plus minus 2 pi sine 2 pi t the whole square dt which is equal to integral 0 to 1 root of 1 plus 4 pi square cos square 2 pi t plus 4 pi square sine square 2 pi t dt which is equal to integral 0 to 1 root of 1 plus 4 pi square dt since from the last two terms you can take out 4 pi square so that you have cos, two, cos square 2 pi t plus sin square 2 pi t which is equal to 1. Now this is equal to you know that comparing to t this quantity is a constant you can take it outside therefore root of 1 plus 4 pi square into integral 0 to 1 dt which is equal to root of 1 plus 4 pi square into t from 0 to 1 and it is equal to root of 1 plus 4 pi square.